Yeah, good to go. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and teams from Waterford and from Cork. Um, my name is Simon Scroob. I'm the head of corporate banking in, in AIB, and I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here again um, moderating this debate. I was here last year, and, uh, and it was a great afternoon. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was UCD came away with the honours uh, this time last year. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, open up by thanking the, both teams, all the teams actually that have entered this competition, uh, and all those surrounding the competition to make it the success that it is. Um, let me start by introducing the topic. Farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. And the two teams taking uh, part in the debate are University College Cork and Waterford IT on either side of me. Proposing the motion are the team from Cork and opposing the motion are the team from Waterford. Now, it's important to remember that the stance taken by the teams are the positions they've been assigned by random draw and do not necessarily reflect their personal point of view. Uh, and to bear that in mind, please. Uh, we have three judges today. May I introduce the three of them? They're spread throughout the audience there because they are not allowed to confer. Um, Dr. Pamela Byrne uh, is the CEO of the Food Safety Authority of Ireland. Prior to taking up this position in March 2015, Dr. Byrne held the role of Director of Regulatory Policy and Intelligence with Abbott Nutrition, having previously held senior positions in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Dr. Byrne has extensive experience of the food regulatory environment as well as expertise in risk assessment and food safety management at both national and international levels. And between the speakers, I'll tell you a little bit more about Dr. Byrne, because uh, I need to run down the clock for a couple of minutes as the judges get their thoughts in order. The second um, member of the judging panel is Dr. Cahill O'Connor. He's a director of AIB Corporate Banking. I don't know the man at all. He turns up now and then. <laughs> Um, mostly at the end of the month to collect the paycheck, but he's a director of AIB Corporate Banking. He does lead a very uh, large business and has huge responsibility for the food and agri and healthcare sector in AIB, which is one of the largest sectors um, from a banking perspective whom we service. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Dr. O'Connor later as well. And finally, the third member of the judging panel is Dr. Ronan Clinton. Lots of doctors around today of uh, Ernest & Young. I'm, I'm only been um, trying to be funny. Uh, Ronan and Carl are not doctors, uh, they're nurses. Providing, Ronan provides audit and insurance services to large multinational, private and fast growth businesses in Ireland and internationally. And there's loads more to tell you about Ronan later on as well. Now, the regulatory part of all of this today, I need to run through the rules in case there's any debate following the debate. Um, the three judges here today will mark each speaker independently. The speakers have already been made aware of the scoring criteria, and the judges' sheets will be gathered up and totaled, and the winning team will be passed back to myself, um, similar to the previous debate. Um, the three judges, after completing their score sheets, uh, score sheets will retire to select the best speaker uh, who may not actually come from the winning team. So each speaker will speak for a maximum of four minutes only, but it is not necessarily to have any minimum length speech, okay? Um, after the one-minute bell, um, sorry, I'm, I'm making a mess of this now. I'm being clumsy with my English. After one minute, a bell will ring, and again, after three minutes, a bell will ring to indicate that there's one minute left. After four minutes, the bell will ring for a third time. So there's mucho bell ringing here, and who better to ring the bell than Fran? So thank you, Fran, with your bell. Do you want to give us a little? That's the bell. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> Okay, if the speaker is still speaking after uh, the four minutes, uh, penalties will be incurred at a rate of five points per judge. In this case, it will be 15 points for each minute or part of a minute um, allocated over the four minutes. Uh, in terms of timekeeping, time starts when the student starts speaking, not when they approach the podium. If a student immediately stops speaking on the four minute bell, even though they may technically be one or two seconds over by the time they stop, that will not count as a penalty. So you're getting a little bit of leeway for two or three seconds. For clarity, more than and including five seconds over will count as time penalty. While time might be monitored by others in the audience, the timekeeper's decision is final. So you can turn off your uh, mobile phones. Um, interrupting a speaker is not allowed, 
but a very quick one-off heckle is acceptable if appropriate. This can only occur after the first minute bell and before the three minute bell. There is not a facility to gain points for heckling, but overuse of this could result in deductions if a judge or a moderator feels it's excessive. Judges be mindful of that. Points of information may also be offered from the end of the first minute when the first bell rings until the third minute elapses when the second bell rings. This may only be offered by one of six members of the opposing side of the current speaker. Um, to offer a point of information, a speaker should stand up and clearly say point of information in such a way as to attract the attention of the speaker. A point of information should be no more than 10 or 15 seconds in length and should either take the form of a question or a brief statement of fact that undermines the speaker's current point. Accepting points of information is entirely a matter of the speaker's discretion. Points of information do not have to be accepted. If the speaker wishes to accept the point of information, they may, but if not, they should reply, no, thank you, and continue speaking. If the speaker declines the point of information, they should not be disrupted again on the same point. Only one point of information can be made by the oppose opposition at any one time. If heckling or the use of points of information becomes excessive to the point where the moderator feels intervened, this will incur uh, this will result in a 10-point deduction against the team undertaking the heckling or raising the points of information. The three judges will mark the team separately. After the debate, the uh, scores will be combined. Any time penalties or interrupting heckling points of information penalties will be deducted from the team score to arrive at a total. The winning team will be the team with the most marks. There will be a best speaker prize as selected by the judges. The best speaker can come from either the winning or losing team, as I've said already. And I'm not to mention, uh, forget the hashtag. The hashtag for today is hashtag agri-food-debate, and people can get involved with the discussion. So now that all the regular bit is over, I can go back to the beginning here of my notes and invite uh, the first speaker uh, proposing the motion um, from Cork. Um, I hand you the podium. I think we should give him a round of applause, actually, for us. a good morning, a good evening and a good afternoon in the last debate. I think it's safe to say good afternoon at this stage. Chairperson, adjudicators, opposition, distinguished guests. My name is Meg Minahan and our team from UCC is delighted to be here today proposing the motion that farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. Sustainability is the goal to meet social demands in the present without compromising the ability for future generations to meet their own. We are going to highlight for you the importance of farm supports as a foundation of the three pillars of sustainability – economic, social and, of course, environmental. A source of these supports includes the EU Common Agriculture Policy. We expect that the opposition will be discussing past flaws and failures of the CAP. However, ladies and gentlemen, we wish to emphasise the message in this motion that farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. The EU have recognised these flaws and have now set the wheels in motion for this drive towards sustainability. CAP has contributed well over €50 billion Euro to Irish agriculture, leading to our wide availability of safe, sustainable, affordable food, which is accessible to everybody in our society as well as producing a massive food surplus, the export of which is critically important to the Irish economy. The first pillar of sustainability in any country is economic, and David Sweetnam will elaborate more on this. How do farm supports drive the economic sustainability of Irish agriculture? We may, ladies and gentlemen, be hearing a lot from the opposition about systems in place some 12,000 miles away. However, we must assess the value of these supports in an Irish context. There is a price consumers expect to pay for food, and there is a cost of production. This cost of production now exceeds that of the product and has been this way since the early 90s. Price stability is an essential for the consumer, especially to more vulnerable groups in society. How can we give Irish farmers a fair price for a fair day's work in this system, if not through farm supports? You will also hear from David on the second pillar, social sustainability. 
How do supports benefit Irish society? A society and culture which defines who we are and the values that we hold. A society, culture and landscape which attracts tourists from all corners of the globe and revenue from tourism reached six billion in 2018. And finally, our third fundamental pillar, environmental sustainability. The world must urgently reduce its carbon emissions and halt the catastrophic progression of climate change. My teammate Kate Rogers will explain how through well-supported agriculture, we are leading the way in low emission food production and EU cap reforms are driving this further still. Ladies and gentlemen, farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. David and Kate will take you through the many ways in which this rings true for everybody in this room. I urge you to uphold this motion as supports uphold our sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was our first speaker from UCC uh, proposing the motion Farm Supports Drive Sustainable Agriculture. Um, before we invite the opposition, the opening um, uh, opposing speaker, may I just tell you a little bit about one of our sponsors today. The main sponsor of today's event is Dawn Meats. Um, and this event would not happen except for the generosity of that organisation. Dawn Meats is a supplier of choice to a range of leading supermarket, food service and restaurant businesses, exporting to more than 50 countries. As a family-owned business, Dawn remains true to its farming heritage through its close relationships it has forged with over 15,000 Irish farmers, from whom it directly sources grass-fed cattle and lamb for processing at its nine Irish plants. Dawn Meats was established in County Waterford in 1980 and has grown to a business with over two billion in annual revenue, employing 7,000 staff in eight countries. The company works with some of the world's leading food companies who are attracted by a commitment to sustainability and quality. Dawn Meats is a winner of IBEX Environmental Business Process Award, Board BIA and the SEAI Sustainability Awards. Green Awards were awarded in 2016 and 2018 and a Chambers Ireland CSR Award in 2016 for environmental excellence. Dawn Meats was also awarded Gold Stars at the Grace, Great Taste Awards um, more recently. Can we give a round of applause, please, to the sponsors of today's event? Thank you. And are we ready to go? Are the judges OK? Judges OK. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce the opposition speaker from Waterford. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Chairperson, adjudicators, members of the proposition, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shane Geraghty, and I am the captain for the WIT debating team. My teammates, Michael Dohan and Alan McCarthy, and I are honoured to be here before you all today in the 2019 semi final of the Great Agri Food Debate. We are here to firmly oppose the motion that farm support drive sustainable agriculture. Farm support is a term used by both the IFA and the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine when referring to farm support payments or farm subsidies, both of which imply farmers in receipt of money. A farm is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as an area of land used for the growing of crops and or rear keeping of livestock as a business. A subsidy also defined by the Cambridge Dictionary is money given by a government or an organisation to reduce the cost of producing food and to help keep prices low. Agriculture is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as the science or practice of farming, including cultivation of soil for the growing of crops and the rearing of animals to provide food, to provide food wool and other products. Now, sustainable defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as causing little or no damage to the environment and able to continue for a long time. To reintroduce today's motion, ladies and gentlemen, our job is to show all of you here today how farm subsidies are preventing sustainable agriculture and how they are blocking efficient and educated young farmers from gaining a foothold in the agricultural sector. My teammates are not here to try and convince you with lies. Alan McCarthy will take you all on a journey, outlining how farm subsidies give false hope to farmers with regards to our environmental sustainability. 
He will also discuss the detrimental effects that farm subsidies have had on the social sustainability of rural Ireland. Alan will also explain to you the downfall of the subsidised farm programmes which we have seen in the past, along with some up-to-date examples. He will discuss subsidised farming practices and how some of these schemes have been beneficial for a less active farmer who can produce a viable income with little or no input. Michael Dohan will discuss economic unsustainability of farm subsidies and their effects on sustainable agriculture. Michael will discuss the effects farm subsidies have had on Irish farms and how reliant Irish agriculture has become on farm subsidies. Michael will also discuss how the age demographic of Irish farmers has changed very little over the last number of years and how this is posing a problem to young farmers who are unable to gain a foothold in the agricultural sector. All of you here today, ladies and gentlemen, have begun a journey and one which my teammates and I are going to guide you along the way. I am pleading with you, do not allow yourself to be brainwashed by the proposition. They are going to highlight the need for farm support. They may tell you that the family farm will be in danger. All of these are a romanticised view, ladies and gentlemen, and my team will prove all of this to you. I would just like you all to remember one line. If you need a subsidy, to make an enterprise sustainable, then that is not sustainable. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Right, we're getting into the meat of this thing now. Uh, I have a funny feeling we're going to have points of information cropping up over the next uh, couple of minutes. Um, don't be afraid. Um, so thank you very much. Um, the, before we go to the next speaker, also hailing from um, Waterford, um, just a few words on the second sponsor of, of today's event, and that's McDonald's Ireland. There are 91 McDonald's restaurants here in Ireland, 90% of which are owned by franchisees. It was first established in 1977. If I remember correctly, uh, it was a Grafton Street uh, when they opened their first shop, but it has since grown its workforce to more than 5,000 people here in Ireland. All McDonald's beef, bacon, milk, cheese, water and eggs are 100% Irish. McDonald's Europe is the single largest purchaser of Irish beef by volume and one in every five hamburgers sold in McDonald's across the European continent every year comes from Ireland. The company also exports Irish dairy produce, bacon and eggs into the McDonald's system internationally. So they were our two um, main sponsors today and for McDonald's I think we should just uh, show our appreciation as well for, for sponsoring. Okay, so that's it on our sponsors. Um, I'm not forgetting to come back and tell you a little bit more about the judges. I've got some dirt on them here, uh, somewhere in my notes. But can I introduce uh, the next uh, speaker, also hailing from Waterford, opposing the motion, um, Farm sub, uh, Support Strive Sustainable Agriculture. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Ladies, gentlemen, adjudicators and members of the opposition. My name is Alan McCarthy and I am here today to examine the social and environmental sustainability and demonstrate, and demonstrate that farm subsidies are not the driver but in fact are doing the complete opposite for sustainable agriculture. Farm subsidies, do they drive sustainable agriculture? Why well, most certainly not, even if they are managed correctly and fairly. In fact, farm subsidies are laying down the tarmac and driving on and supporting inefficient use of land. For those of you here today from the Midlands and the East Coast, I'm sure you are well aware of the 5,000 acres of common land, more commonly known as the Curragh. Farmers in these regions are getting a cheque for doing very little with the land when it could be used for pig, poultry and other sustainable enterprises. Can you blame the farmer for availing of farm subsidies using a paper solution for an unsustainable problem? Why, most certainly not. Each and every farmer has to do exactly what it says in the tin to gain their farm subsidies, which is to keep the land in good agricultural condition. A speckled piebald pony will do the trick. To farm sustainably, there must be a fair price paid for food that is produced of the highest quality and a premium paid for a product which has been so carefully managed. I would much prefer to get 10 cents per kilo more on a premium for the quality of milk that I produce 
than to get ten cents for a sapling that more than likely will be destroyed by either man or beast. So in an age of technology and advisory knowledge, why agriculture can be sustainable by diversifying one's own enterprise to gain the most for the resources they have. Point of information. Where are they getting this capital from? That is a very good point, but my team of supersonic scientists will deal with that in a minute. <laughs> The opposition have said to you all that farm subsidies drive environmentally sustainable agriculture. Well, let me tell you the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Farm subsidies, by their nature, are restrictive. Look at the lifespan of reps and EOS and the likes. They last for five years at best. Restricted and sustainable are a contradiction in terms. Sustainably, previously outlined by Shane, refers to causing little or no damage to the environment, therefore able to continue for a long time, while restricted means not allowing to flourish or prosper. These schemes were designed to increase biodiversity and help Mother Nature get back on her feet once again. Can anybody tell me what happened when these schemes were terminated? I'll tell you. Mother Nature got swept off her feet, set aside, ploughed in. Is that sustainable agriculture? I don't think so. For all you green peacekeepers here today, I think you have all forgotten the real meaning of sustainable agriculture. It goes back to utilisation and using the available resources around you. Take the beef farmer rearing beef for Bobby the Butcher, or you, the customer, spending a penny in Peggy's post office. Where has it all went wrong? I'll tell you. Buttering up agriculture into something it's not. If you go back 50 years ago, people worked in perfect harmony with nature and money was evenly distributed throughout the local economy. It is a sad state of affairs when the local GA club is finding it hard to field, our Peggy's post office is closing down, rural jobs are beginning to dwindle and our young people must move away to urban hubs and find work to earn money just to give it to the landlord in overpriced accommodation. So let's stand back and watch sustainable agriculture stand on its own two feet once again. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. There was a few you hoos there uh, for that. Thank you very much. Um, so before we call the next speaker and give the judges just 30 seconds or a minute to, to, um, to mark their sheets, can I go back to one of the judges for one second and tell you a little bit uh, more, if I, can find me, if I can find the dirt. Um, I think they're going to get out of jail on this one, are they? This is interesting. Dr. Pamela Byrne and her qualifications. Listen to this for a second. Only a thermometer has more degrees. Dr. Byrne holds a PhD in environmental toxicology from University College Cork, a Master's of Science in Aqu uh, Aquatic Resource Management from King's College, University of London, a Bachelor of Science in Zoology from UCC, and a higher diploma in environmental law from the University of Aberset. Is that right? All right, I'm not going to even go there. In Wales. So well done. During her time at the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Dr. Byrne gained a deep knowledge of the food sector as an environmental toxicologist and risk assessor and was instrumental in developing Ireland's research and innovation policy programmes in relation to food and the bioeconomy. Dr. Byrne also worked in the Cabinet of the European Commission for Research, Science and Innovation with Commissioner Mar uh, Mara Gagan Quinn. An experienced chairwoman, no doubt, Dr. Byrne was the chair of the Management Board of Joint Programming Initiative, A Healthy Diet for a Healthy Life, for the last five years. She is also chair of the Strategic Advisory Board of the Institute of Food and Health at University College Dublin, Ireland. She currently chairs the board of the Association of Chief Executives of State Agencies in Ireland. And she still finds time to come to Waterford today to judge at this great debate. So well done and thank you again, uh, Dr Byrne, for coming along. So um, going back to Cork in UCC, we're inviting the next speaker up, uh, proposing the motion Farm Supports drive sustainable agriculture. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Sweetenham and I'm delighted to be here today for the great agri-food debate. First, let me reintroduce today's motion because frankly, I think the opposition actually supported our motion in the end of the speaker two's argument. 
Farm supports are a key driver to sustainable agriculture, and I'm going to demonstrate this to you in terms of the social and economic pillars of sustainability. Now, today, there are three ways to produce food. Option one, we forget about sustainability and regulations altogether. We try to produce as much food as cheaply as possible. This is a race to the bottom, both in terms of price, and the only way we can compete with the likes of Brazil in terms of cost. However, this would result in untold damage to the Irish food reputation, as well as the safety and the health of the consumer, not to mind the environmental complications. The second option, we implement sustainability regulations, but do not provide any support for our farmers. These changes would be disastrous for the industry, would result in a massive increase in the price of food and segmentation of the market. This means that the poorer in society would simply not be able to afford sustainable food, thus again opening the door for unsustainable imported products. And then, from a consumer's perspective, I have to ask you, are you happy to eat lamb from New Zealand with 12,000 air miles? Are you happy to eat McDonald's burgers from an untraceable source in Brazil? The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, without... I'm just coming to that right now. The fact of the matter is, is that without regulation and support, we will not be able to compete with these markets and potentially drive the likes of McDonald's, who, by the way, pride themselves in sustainable Irish beef, into buying elsewhere. Finally, option three, ladies and gentlemen, we regulate with compensation. We continue to use agricultural supports while also implementing new rules and regulations to increase the sustainability of our food production, thus allowing for a safe, secure and affordable stream of sustainable food for years to come. Now, today we're faced with a stark reality. To put it simply, doing away with farm supports means doing away with the Irish family farm. I'll give you an example. If you travel down from Tralee to Dingle in County Kerry, you'll pass a small laneway. One of thousands just, all, just like this are all around the country. Along this laneway, maybe two miles long, you'll pass one beef farmer at the bottom of the mountain where the land is just about good enough to farm and five sheep farmers. That's six families all living off the land, producing high quality meat and making a living. But you see, these families rely on supports. If the cap was to be removed in the morning, these families would all be forced to find other jobs with little to no public transport in these isolated areas they'd have to move out of their homes, move to the cities. On this laneway alone, it would result in the loss of six households from the local community. That's six less households, as the opposition mentioned, buying from the local shop, socialising in the local pub, playing with the local GA club. Multiply that by the thousands of laneways across the west of Ireland, where most of this land is marginal, and we begin to see the impact. Rural communities will be, rural communities will be decimated. With these being such uncertain times, especially in terms of Brexit, why would we want to pull the rug out from under our main indigenous economic driver? It's a simply ridiculous idea to remove supports, as they really do drive sustainable agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well done. Don't forget the hashtag for today, please. Hashtag agri-food uh, debate. So, um, while the judges are frantically um, marking their sheets, let me tell you a little bit about the next judge that's on the panel today, uh, Cahill O'Connor, Director in AIB Corporate Banking. Now, Cahill is a great man. Listen to this. He's over 22 years' extensive corporate banking experience, both domestically and internationally. Now, in previous roles, Cahill was the Director of AIB's Australian business. We shut that down when Cahill left it. He was head of AIB's corporate finance business. Ah, we shut that down when he left it. And has worked in AIB's international corporate banking unit. Never really recovered from Cahill, actually. You can see the trend here. Uh, been continuously encouraging Cahill to take up judging of debating competitions in third level for quite a while now. Um, more seriously, he does have a very important role. Apart from his job in the bank, he chairs the Inter-Alpha Group of European Banks. Um, which is um, representing Ireland and AIB on, um, on a council of, of, um, of banks spread across Europe that would have similar interests. And he recently returned from INSEAD in France. He's a proud dad that has two girls, aged 8 and 12. So the judges are still writing, which brings me to the third and final judge, Ronan Clinton. Don't worry, Ronan is getting a bit... You're getting worried there, Ronan. 
Um, Ronan has a particular interest in entrepreneurial, fast-growing and family businesses expanding both nationally and internationally. And he's worked with a vi wide variety of customers, clients, and has significant experience in manufacturing, retail, distribution, professional services, and technology sectors. He's managing partner of EY in Waterford. So thank you again, judging panel, for coming along. OK, so that's the filler. Um, we're going to our next speaker, opposing the motion Farm supports drive sustainable agriculture all the way from Waterford. Um, here we go. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank you, Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, Chairperson, members of the Opposition and judges, good afternoon to you all and welcome. My name is Michael Dohan and I, along with Shane and Alan, I am also here to strongly oppose the motion that farm supports in terms of subsidies drive sustainable agriculture. Before going any further, I would like to give a quick mention to the opposition how wrong and out of touch these young men and women are with modern day agriculture. Whether you choose to listen or ignore, the harsh reality is that farm supports, in terms of subsidies, are disguising businesses all over this island which are un economically unviable on their own and are using this money to continue. If you need a subsidy, as Shane said, to survive, ladies and gentlemen, it is not sustainable and it is most certainly not viable. Just last week, my own mother was out picketing with thousands of other Irish nurses for a rise in their price for the work in which they do. And like us agriculture people, we want to be paid for the price in which we do. We want premiums on our produce. And what better example of this than Board B's excellent incentive of the Quality Assurance Scheme? As improvements come in our education, we are turning out highly qualified, highly driven and highly motivated young people all over this Ireland. Without inhibiting subsidies, through the use of technology, science and research, their efficiencies will drive sustainable agriculture. From looking at Chagas Farm Survey figures, a staggering 35% of Irish farms earn less than €10,000. In a generation where the cost of living is at a record high, it really begs the question how these businesses are able to stay afloat. Point of information. Yeah. How are you comparing high cost of living, which are more, mostly in urban areas, with rural uh, It still costs money. Farms. It still costs money still to live. Money. You know, it does. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> businesses which are unprofitable and who continue to be helped along by subsidies are adding to an increasing less well-off demographic instead of growing a wealthy economy. The farms which are the most profitable are often the most sustainable. They are driven by the youth of our modern day agriculture. They are the ones which use the best technologies and the ways of working. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a solution. We adapt, we diversify and we educate. Beef farming in Ireland is now the least profitable enterprise to be in. I am a beef farmer and I know that by becoming more efficient there is room to improve and we can make money. But without subsidies. When you become more efficient in what you do, it is not the schemes or the subsidies that keep us doing what we love doing. It is the passion and the drive to drive a more sustainable future and leave it in a better place for those to come after us. What is a startling statistic is the demographic of the people who now occupy the industry, with 64% of people now aged between 50 and 60 years old. A staggering 6.2% of farmers in this country are aged below 35. Land mobility on this, island, on this island of Ireland is a huge issue, and young people have, cannot get access to land. We live in a time oh, no, not taken. We live in a time of rapid growth in terms of population and food demand. It is up to the youth, like those in front of me here today, to drive sustainable agriculture without inhibiting subsidies. And as just as I think it is now, during the season that's in it. As I sit in my grandmother's living room, watching cows preparing themselves to calve, we all face times of uncertainty in our lives. And yet again, and on other screens in our kitchens, we listen to Theresa May harping on, yet again failing to deliver another resolution for the people of her country. But ladies and gentlemen, let me, ladies and gentlemen, don't let the proposing team tell you differently, and that I am certain about, and that is the farm supports and farm subsidies will not and will never drive sustainable agriculture. Thank you. Well done. Another few yahoos, so uh, congratulations, well done. Um, that was wonderful. Um, now I'm running out of stories because I've introduced the judges. Uh, I've told you about the sponsors. Um, I can tell you a little bit about myself, but that'll be too boring. But I will let you in on one secret. I debated once, actually. But the debates we did in the old days were Osquelga. 
they were diasporaed. And um, we debated in Munster, Munster, I remember the final, and going back to 1978 in Cruises Hotel in Limerick, diasporaed as Gwilga. And I can't remember any of the Gwilga today, but I remember the motion was, man's inhumanity to the man made countless thousands mourn. It was the most common topic around at the time. I think every debate we had was the, it was the same topic. But there was uh, four of us on the team. And the trouble we had was actually translating from English into Irish. So you can imagine what the debate turned out to be. There was no points of information allowed, but you were allowed to throw things at the people that were uh, standing at the podium. So. But anyway, Tipperary won it that day, and, uh, and that was good. Are the judges ready for the next speaker? So all the way from Cork, proposing the motion, and I'm going to have nightmares about this motion before, uh, before long. Farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. Please, from Cork. Thank you very much. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kate Rogers, and I'm delighted to be here today at the great agri-food debate. Today I would like to address the final pillar of sustainability, and debatably the most important pillar, and that is environmental sustainability. To suggest that agricultural sustainability can be achieved without supports from government is not only outrageous, but incredibly irresponsible. Supporting sustainable agriculture through financial means ensures the profitability for farming is not diminished and can and will make meeting sustainability targets mandatory for farmers to ensure that they continue to receive such subsidies. Now, if we were to remove subsidies, it would have put us in the same situation that we see with the New Zealand farming model, whereby the number one concern is profitability. Um, New Zealand saw their farms expand and intensify in order to stay afloat when subsidies were removed practically overnight. This Wait, interest, are you saying that we as young, young educated people aren't able to sustain a future without subsidies? Well, I'm going to show you an example. No other people in this, or no other industry in the world that gets subsidies, and we get handouts from our. our well, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't get subsidies. The intensification of the New, Ze New Zealand farming model led to loss of aquatic uh, biodiversity and water quality issues. New Zealand now have no blue flag beaches. This means that environmental concerns may, were not always at the forefront of the farmer's mind. And that's before we even discuss unsustainable and highly unethical, as far as I'm concerned, slaughtering of male dairy cows at birth to ensure profitability in the absence of supports. How are they disposing of such carcasses? Is it sustainable? Irish farmers, on the other hand, are incentivised to be more environmentally conscious. Through subsidies, the Irish government can create environmental stipulations that must be met. I've already taken one, thank you must be met in order to continue receiving su such supports. Now, the opposition have alluded that subsidies have not been properly implemented in the past, but I would like to use one of many examples showing how supports have led to innovation and thus driving environmental sustain sustainability forward. The Beef Data and Genomics Programme of 2015. Now, this scheme involved 300 million worth of funding and involves improving the ne genetic merit of the suckler herd. This will see a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 4.4% by 2020 and further to 12% by 2030. Now, this highly successful and complicated scheme involves the collection of numerous amounts of data nationwide. Can we honestly expect that this is to be achieved on a large scale without the, the use of government funding? Even the coordination alone, it just doesn't make sense to remove subsidies. If, can we honestly expect that further schemes will follow if we do not ensure the ongoing financial supports to keep projects like this ongoing in the future? Supports to Irish farmers have a global impact on climate change and environmental sustainability. Without these subsidies, Irish beef is simply not competitive on the world market and therefore allows countries like Brazil's unsustainable beef production, which has a carbon footprint that is four times larger than that of Ireland, to gain even more of a market share. If this was to happen, it would increase the net global emissions, known as carbon leakage. Now, how can the opposition suggest that we turn our backs on our farmers, offering them no support and guidance on how to tackle these environmental issues and expect all of these complicated global goals to honestly be met? I urge you to ask yourself today, is this fair is this practical and is it even really sustainable? Thank you.
Thank you very much. Well done. Okay, so we're coming toward the end. There are two more speakers uh, with closing arguments uh, to take the podium. Um, we're going to invite the opposition speaker from Waterford uh, opposing the motion for closing arguments. Judge is good to go? Yeah? Okay, let's go, so please. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, farm support do drive sustainable agriculture. We, the proposition, have highlighted the three pillars of sustainability are all driven by farm supports. The first pillar is economic. To reiterate, there are three ways to produce food. One, unregulated production, and you can forget about sustainability. Two, regulated, uncompensated production, causing disastrous increase in food prices. Or three, the effective, sustainable system in place, regulated, compensated production. Whether or not the UK government can agree on anything, but specifically to extend Article 50, Brexit is looming. And its importance for our agriculture industry is critical. A further dramatic fall in the value of sterling could make us less competitive. Removal of supports could be the last straw. Farm supports drive economically sustainable agriculture. The second pillar is social. Speaker one is of the opinion that romantic Ireland is dead and gone. However, farm supports are the lifeblood of rural Ireland. Members of the opposition are livestock farmers themselves, as they have stated. Removal of farm supports would drive one thing certainly, and that is the demolition of rural social structure. Point of interest, why is there only 6.2% of farmers in Ireland under age 35 in farm support work? What's the, sorry, repeat the question. Why is there only 6.2% of Irish farmers under the age of 35 is that relevant to the point I just made? Yeah, you're saying that farm support no. work. The third and final pillar is environmental. We must continue to reduce the impact of agriculture on the environment, and this is being driven by supports. The government has the power to conditionally award supports based on the meeting of environmental standards and stipulations. David mentioned that a removal of supports and increased cost of Irish beef would drive both countries and multinationals to seek cheaper products for their consumer. Paul Nolan of Dawn Meats has proudly informed us over the last couple of days that one in five McDonald's burgers consumed in Europe are Irish. And these burgers, we, a lot of uh, Irish McDonald's burgers are being made down the road in a Dawn Meats factory in Waterford, creating employment as Dawn Meats are looking for young Irish graduates. So farm supports by extension do create jobs for young Irish ag students, food, food industry professionals. Our beef sector is one of the lowest carbon emitters in the EU. Therefore, it is imperative, not only economically, but environmentally, that our beef prices remain competitive to McDonald's and to others. Looking forward, the EU are moving towards a common food policy as another avenue to drive sustainability in agriculture and food systems. This opens up plenty of opportunities for further cap reform and brings together agriculture sector, food industry and people to create synergies in environmentally sustainable food supplies. Farm supports drive environmentally sustainable agriculture. Farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. Thank you. Well done, thanks very much. Um, so that concludes, from a Waterford perspective, uh, opposing the motion. So the final speaker, yeah, you all right? Sorry. So the final speaker today hails from uh, UCC proposing the motion. I beg your pardon? Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I got my notes wrong here. Uh, I, be, I, I beg your pardon. Uh, sorry about that now. That's my clumsiness here. Um, so WIT, yeah? Did I get that right? Okay. <laughs> Fran, give an all ring of the bell there. Thank you very much. We'll invite WIT's final speaker. Sorry about that. Before I start, I would like to remind all of you here today of the motion at hand. The motion that we are strongly opposing, that farm supports drive sustainable agriculture. 
Last Sunday morning, after the cows were milked and the calves were fed, myself and my grandfather sat down to the breakfast. Knowing he wouldn't see me again for the week, I knew he was eager for a chat, and hence the second the grandmother walked out the door, the talk turned to farm. With January just over, his two biggest concerns were the price of milk and the price of fertiliser. I knew that the price of fertiliser was €300 Euros per tonne for nitrogen. I told him and I put him out of his misery, and we both began the same process, trying to figure out where we would put the few pounds together to buy our fertiliser. We both agreed there wouldn't be much left out of the milk check, barely enough to buy the grandmother her birthday present. <laughs> he then reminded me, as he so often does, in 1984, he brought milk to the creamery and received 23 pence per litre. On his way home, he stopped off and bought a tonne of nitrogen for £147. That man reared and sent six children through education. In today's world, the price received in 1984 is €1.08 per litre, while January's milk price was £0.32 cents per litre. No thank you, and closing. During our, your journey with us today, Alan has demonstrated to you all how our government have used farm subsidies to hide behind while neglecting rural Ireland. Alan referred to Peggy's post office. Ladies and gentlemen, since 1992, 800 post offices in this country have closed. Now, had there been a young, vibrant and entrepreneurial young farmer in the area requiring their services, I highly doubt this problem would have happened. Michael educated you all the very relevant facts and figures relating to the demographic of our farmers and the problems that this is having on the sustainability of the industry. Michael told you all the disgraceful income Irish farmers are making, with 35% earning less than 10,000 per year. Farmers, the people who during harvest and planting finish their 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, then continue to put in a further 72 hours. Those who will wait up all night with a newborn calf, watch it die, dry their eyes, and then say, maybe next year. The proposition have never once mentioned the pig farmers of this country, farmers who are not subsidised by our government, and the farmers who are recognised within the farming community as being the most efficient users of their resources. Going back to your second speaker, no thank you. Going back to your second speaker, Shane Ross is closing down the pubs. It is not farm supports keeping them open. <laughs> we pay our people for the services they provide. We paid a taxi driver to bring us home last night. We paid a tailor to fit us with a nice suit. These are not subsidised. They are paid for the services they provide. Why subsidise farmers? All of us here today who hail from a farming background are, like myself, proud to be a farmer. So why do we let our dignity be tarnished and disrespected by receiving farm subsidies that could be removed at any stage, instead of getting properly paid for the services we provide? and having our own security with our income. The price of our produce needs to increase following that of our inputs. Farmers do not need support. Farmers need and deserve a fair price. I urge you to oppose the motion. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, so, the judges are going to retire, I think, now, at this point, um, and, and uh, work their magic. Um, from our perspective here, um, I have to say, from what I heard sitting here, it was absolutely tremendous, the way both sets of students could argue their points and articulate them in such a wonderful way. You know, compared to 1978 in Limerick, when we were debating Asquelga, We've moved on, I can assure you. I think they deserve a really good round of applause for, for the performance. Yeah, so well done. And, um, and the very best of luck to both teams. Now, this is really extraordinary uh, because, um, like the previous debate, uh, there's been a split decision here. One judge was fervently in one camp, the second judge fervently in the other camp, and the third judge um, was wavering one way and the other. But it did come down in favour of one team, but it was extremely close, and I really believe that both teams should be very, very proud of what they brought here today. It was, uh, it was one of the most informed, one of the best debates I've seen in quite a while. 
But the winner today um, is uh, WIT. Will you please give a round of applause to UCC?